hello guys welcome back to my classes so today uh, we are seeing about sampling designs so in last class uh, we had covered probability sampling design so in probability uh, we had seen simple random systematic stratified cluster and other sampling techniques so today we are seeing about non-probability sampling this convenient judgment and what and snowball sampling so tagline is all are not equal uh, the tagline of probability was all are equal this the chance of being into the study was equal for everyone but in non probability the chance is not uh, chance is not there so it is non probability all are not equal so let's um, go into detail about non probability sampling so basically we have four methods that is convenient sampling judgmental snowball and quota sampling so the basic uh, difference between probability and non probability there is no random selection here non probability sampling so uh, the result will not be very accurate as obtained from sampling design we just cannot uh, accurately extrapolate the result of the study back to the population so every study is meant to extrapolate the result obtained from the sample to the population because it's very uh, impractical to do a study in a big population so we conduct a study in a small population which is a representative of a big population a small sample which is representative of a big population and we uh, extrapolate the result obtained from the sample to the population but if we are doing a study with a non-probability method sample selection the extrapolation is out of question uh, it will not be as accurate as probability so we'll come back to the methods the first one is convenience it is based on the accessibility what is accessible for the investigator he takes a sample from uh, that area or that group of people it is totally based on his accessibility second one the judgmental uh, it is the uh, investigator notion about the hypothesis or his idea about the research so he deliberately selects sample to uh, make sure that that follows some criteria a uh, quota sampling is nothing but a corresponding part of uh, stratified sample in the probability there we have seen a homogeneous group making from a heterogeneous group uh, boys girls uh, such uh, strata we make here mm, but the problem is the simple random uh, technique will be missing in uh, quota sampling snowball sampling it's a very unique technique where uh, sample will be uh, selected by the reference of one page one one uh, one person and it goes to the next and then next to next it goes like this until we reach the total sample size so we'll move on to the first one that is purposely sampling or it is also known as judgmental sampling so researchers select a particular group which might represent the population okay so it is totally based on this judgment the investigator judgment so we just collect a group of people uh, there is no evidence base it is a notion about the uh, hypothesis or his idea the investigator's idea that he thinks it might be the representative of this population suppose we go to a dental college we take a group of people uh, he sees the first hundred students and he thinks that it will be the representative of the entire students okay that is his idea about the college it might not be the actual scenario so non-probability always lacks uh, quality okay so that is the pur purposive or judgmental its judgment is uh, working on the sampling second one is the convenience this is the most common used uh, sampling design uh, in a big population because when we are doing a study uh, we need to do the study in a very short span of time so what we do is we take sample from the accessible areas the nearby areas so most conveniently we get units from nearby areas because the cases are readily available suppose we are doing a study 
uh, among the school children. Uh, so we don't go very far away from our place. So we go to the nearby schools and we take sample. So that is based on our convenience. Uh, it doesn't mean that the nearby schools are representative of the actual school children. It might not be the case. But we are going and taking the schools based on our convenience. Okay. So um, that is convenient sampling. It is totally based on the convenience of investigators. So the researcher stays here. So he takes the nearby population. Okay. That is convenient sampling. Judgment is about uh, his understanding about the study. He thinks that this will be the representative of that population and he select that sample so the quota sampling is nothing but counterpart of uh, stratified sampling which we have seen in the uh, probability sampling here what we do is we needed a sample interviewer needed a 40 adults um, and 20 adolescents in order to study the students television viewing habits so what he uh, do is we take 20 men and 20 women and he take 10 adolescent girls and 10 adolescent boys. So the best part of quota sampling, it uh, maintains the representativeness because we had seen if we are not done quota sampling, the all uh, uh, people might be come from one uh, subgroup. The other subgroup might lose its representativeness. So quota sampling is almost like uh, stratified sampling because a heterogeneous group will be divided into homogeneous and a particular quota will be selected from each so suppose if we are going back to our dental college scenario we needed 100 people uh, so we have five batches uh, one first year second year third year final year and interns so what we do is we if, suppose we need 100 people so we take 20 people from each category so that itself represents the whole college but the point we are not doing is we are not taking random selection from each batch so that was done in um, probability sampling so quota sampling a fixed quota of 20 will be taken from each subgroup okay so that is a counterpart of stratified sampling and the last one is snowball sampling snowball sampling it's a uh, very interesting sampling technique i'll just uh, show you one picture This snowball okay this snowball this uh, idea of snowball is when the snowball uh, they say when snowball is uh, starting from one point as it grows it increases its size because it collects the snow over the uh, track so that's how this snowball is working uh, snowball it is uh, done to uh, select population very uh, uh, people from population such as uh, homosexuals such as uh, any uh, peculiar diseases which are very uh, obscure so, so people uh, might not be knowing actual cases but uh, one person can point out the next person because if you are doing a study like uh, smoking habit in a college nobody will uh, turn up for the study uh, the investigate first uh, find out one person and we ask uh, that person to find out two person uh, keeping uh, that the uh, person's uh, details will be confidential so we can uh, get the next two people from that two people again we can get next four people so it goes uh, like chain by chain so every uh, time uh, the person uh, who is uh, selected first will be getting the next two sample or next three sample the investigator has no role after the first point the sample itself uh, selecting the further sample until it reaches um, the ultimate uh, sample size. So the researcher asks for a referral from other individuals. So it is also known as chain sampling, chain referral or sampling referral. So just like a snowball as it uh, grows uh, down the hill, it increases size. So uh, once when we starting the study, it is just one or two samples so as it grows they select other samples from the hidden group uh, so it grows uh, day by day and uh, we get the sample we need it so that is uh, snowball sampling just a diagrammatic representation for the first person select three person each uh, one person select the three person so likewise we get the total sample size okay so 
probability and non probability sample the main difference is we cannot generalize the um, result of the sample back to the population okay uh, that is uh, uh, possible only in probability because probability sampling maintains the equality every participant had a chance in you know, probability it is not having a equality so we cannot just uh, put back the result to the population okay so it is usually uh, generate hypothesis probability it is to test hypothesis so probability sampling usually eliminates bias uh, but uh, non probability so many biases will um, come but non probability all most of the studies will be non probability because it is cheaper easier and quicker to carry out probability uh, sampling techniques it's very difficult to conduct usually when we have a very small sample size uh, if you are doing a randomized control trial or a clinical trial with very small population like 10 20 30 40 uh, we can follow the simple random technique or any other such techniques if you have a very big bigger sample size this probability is uh, very difficult to keep up so most commonly used uh, is non probability even though it has flaws so that's all about non probability sampling there are various techniques i'll just have a recap so first one was convenience it is based on the uh, patient's uh, convenience it is uh, the nearby locality people or participants will be selected judgmental or purposive sampling it is based on the judgment of investigator and the quota sampling just like the stratified sampling each quota will be selected from each uh, homogeneous group but there is no random sampling snowball sampling from referral uh, chain sampling the first person will select the uh, next uh, few people and those few people will select the further until we reach a sample size so non-probability uh, it's uh, very easy to conduct but the quality is less compared to probability one so that's all about uh, non-probability sampling so i'll come up with a uh, new uh, class okay so uh, thank you